Wildcats. She had 11 kills yesterday on an incredible 450 hitting efficiency from the left pin. When you combine her with Ali Stumler, they have quickly become one of the best one-two left side punches across the entire country. We have got some technical difficulties as we come on the air. Just want to apologize for that. Of course, we make every effort to straighten things out as quickly as possible. Texas A&M 12 and 11 overall, 5 and 8 in conference. Kentucky, on the other hand, just that one blemish on their record, 12 wins in the SEC. It's currently ranked number seven, both in the coaches poll and the RPI, 19 and 4 overall, and wearing their home white uniforms. Best three out of five sets. Stumler missed the first swing. Comes right back on the second. Alley Stumler wearing number 17 in white, the 6'1 senior out of Indiana. We talked about the good efficiency from Maddie Skinner yesterday. Well, Allie Stumler was absolutely no slouch. She had 13 kills but took 36 swings with only two errors. Pretty good job managing that load. Nice dig by Emma Grom, the freshman setter coach. Setter of the week so far in the SEC. And better ball handling for Texas A&M, which is certainly a key. And that, ooh, very, <laughs> might have a very early challenge, but that ball by Reagan Rutherford called it. It caught a piece of the sideline. Eleanor Bevan, the Libero, taking over for Gabby Curry, one of the best ever, maybe the best ever Libero in Kentucky volleyball history. Still working on those technical difficulties, making every effort to square things away for you. Long early rally, good quality on both sides, and Rutherford crossbody down the line for the kill for Kentucky, out to the early lead 3-1. Yeah, I like the range we see from Rutherford here early, already going down the line, challenging the block of the left side. Lots of balls to Lauren Davis offensively, and then Rutherford really challenging her to play defense as well. A remarkable number. Kentucky had 13 aces just 24 hours ago. 13 aces, which was a season high, in three relatively quick sets. <laughs> An amazing number. Texas A&M, on the other hand, had just one service winner. Teeler with a joust at the net, able to put that ball away. Ajani Teeler, one of the wonderful stories in all of college volleyball. Five foot ten, she's played a number of positions, but now she's manning the middle blocking position out of Grand Prairie, Texas, wearing number 15 in white. Really had yeah, a I remarkable think, season. Yeah, I think the player Ajani Teeler is such a, a great reflection of Kentucky volleyball and how they get the most out of every player on the floor and the way they have used her so uniquely. Perfect dig by Bevan. Transition opportunity for Kentucky on top 4-2. Davis cutting inside. Nice dig by Stumler going high flat. And Davis is getting a lot of opportunities early. Bevan with another dig. And down the line. Transition opportunities for the team in white Kentucky and hit for a higher percentage. In transition, it was interesting uh, when we spoke with their fine head coach, Craig Skinner, that he said, they hit a higher percentage out of transition, 291. He looked up the numbers because he was curious in our Zoom call. And in first ball side out, they hit 280. That's very, very unusual. As you mentioned, Paul, lots of balls to Lauren Davis. And she's been low air, which is a big point of emphasis for Texas A&M. There she comes up with a kill. A big cross-court swing for Lauren Davis. It took her seven swings to get that kill. No error yet today for Davis, but they have not been able to generate kills. I do like the fact that they've stayed low error, though. That has definitely been a point of emphasis for the Aggies, who said coming into this weekend, we have to eliminate errors. There is Camille Connor, 6'1 graduate student out of San Antonio, a very offensive-minded setter. You'll probably see that as this match goes along and a very comfortable start by Ali Stumler, a couple of kills off the left side. Yeah, and the kill prior to that one, she faces cross, she faces angle, swings cross body, which is maybe her favorite shot, finds an opening down the line. That time she goes sharp cross, so Ali Stumler just showing she can do it all. 
national championship match. Stumler was the definition, Missy, and I'm glad you said it that way, of absolutely doing it all. Triana Rush with an important kill down the sideline, but Stumler again wearing number 17 in the national championship match against the Texas Longhorns in Omaha. 26 of 51, took 51 swings, and had two, count them, two errors. Blocked once, hit one ball out of bounds. Just Unbelievable. absolutely remarkable. Yep, yep. And to think that they played last fall and last spring, and now here she is in a position this year where not only is there a lot asked of her physically, but now she's one of the older players on this team. And so there's a lot asked of her from a leadership point. So you have to wonder about the wear and tear on her, both physically and mentally. There's Bird Kuhn in her fourth year down in College Station. Nine and nine last year, regional semis in 2019, seven seasons as an assistant coach and associate head coach at Kansas before coming to Bryant College Station. Skinner suffered a concussion, took a hard shot against Arkansas, and uh, had to miss one match against Tennessee, still won by the Kentucky Wildcats. And speaking of Arkansas, are they the hard luck team of the oh. SEC season? They lose to Kentucky twice in five sets, one of them 16-14, and then they lose yesterday to Florida in five sets, 16-14. If they win one of those, one of those five setters, they're in the tournament. Much better start for Texas A&M. I'll give you the scores from yesterday. It was all Kentucky. They won three sets to none, 25-17, 25-18, 25-15. Boy, that is really a good swing off the left. Much improved for Texas A&M. What do you see differently today than yesterday as Morgan Christian is able to register the kill? Well, I think early on they're giving themselves an opportunity from first contact. That was just not the case yesterday. They absolutely had to improve first contact in order to hang in this game because, as you've already mentioned, Paul, Kentucky is so good in transition, so you just can't give them any help. They're already so good defensively. Uh, Johnny Taylor once again. Plays in the middle, but Craig Skinner in this system moves her to the right side where she used to be very, very efficient at the opposite. Only eight swings yesterday for Ajani Taylor, but she kills four of them without an error. So they're using her at the right time and keeping her so highly efficient. First ball contact, Maddie Skinner with the kill for Craig Skinner now in his 17th year. Reigning national champs defeated Texas, as I mentioned, in Omaha. Three sets to one, the national coach of the year, and four times the SEC coach of the year. And Kentucky has been in first place in the SEC for 728 days. That's not a bad rank in a very competitive and improving uh, conference. And talk about improving. How about the huge stuff block in the middle right there for Bella Bell, a player who Coach Craig Skinner said, this is what coaching is all about. A player who sticks with it through the hard times, tore her ACL, coming out of high school, has really had to battle at Kentucky and finds herself now in the starting lineup. What a great story. Hitting 413, tremendous efficiency, but even better as a young player, the redshirt sophomore, averaging 1.2 blocks per set, which is very, very impressive, much needed. Performance out of the tra Kansas transfer, Morgan Christian able to put that ball away. Skinner again, nicely done in the cross court. Look, Kentucky, as they proved last year, when they had um, Madison Lilly at the setting position, were very good in first contact. Emma Grome has tried to fill those big shoes. Are they as good in serve, receive, and first ball contact this year? I think they're getting there. You know, I, I really do. I think they're getting there. Uh, you know, they've got Ali Stumler who passes in every rotation for them. And so that's a plus for them. And of course, Bevan is a freshman only getting better at the Libre position. See the nice push to the outside right there by Emma Grom. A great job of getting that ball all the way to the antenna. She gives Maddie Skinner different looks with that set. Doesn't push her right into the block.
there they are in transition, the Wildcats. You don't want to get into a long rally with this group from Kentucky. Look at Emma Grome here, finding her middle in a long rally behind. Are you kidding me? That's a freshman setter. And Bella Bella, a player who's just worked her way into the starting lineup. That is a great transition volleyball from Kentucky, although I do think we're going to get a challenge. The question here will be whether or not this one caught the sideline for Bella Bell, but whether or not it did, I just love the tenacity and transition here for Kentucky and that they and it is going to be the point to A&M. So a great challenge by Bird Coon. And of course, like all the other Power Five conferences, the SEC using the experimental review system this year. So if you choose to challenge and you are correct, you don't lose that challenge. You get to two. If it were to go to a fifth set, you'd receive a third, but not to exceed two challenges in the fifth set. And so for Bird Coon, good use of the challenge and goes right back in her pocket. I think it's so important for Texas A&M here, particularly in this fourth set, to stay within striking distance. You know, it just takes one run here in rally scoring volleyball to make your move. But after losing three consecutive sets, it's important for the Aggies to set the tone early. Of course, yesterday when I mentioned those three consecutive sets, these two teams met yesterday, and it was a Kentucky win by way of sweep. Raya Walker to serve for the Wildcats. We mentioned they had 13 aces yesterday. No one with more than Eleanor Bevan, the freshman, but Raya Walker right behind her with three aces. Camille Connor, fifth year setter for Texas A&M will be called there for an illegal contact. Camille Connor. One of the great setters over the last four years in the Southeastern Conference, not afraid to force her middles. So you may see a few ball handling errors like that from her, but she's going to find her middles. McGrome doing a great job here of keeping a balanced offense going behind this time. And you see Mallory Talbert of Texas A&M just can't close that block. Plenty of room for Reagan Rutherford to take a big swing there. Bevan with a nice pickup. Make it four kills for Allie Stumler, and it's the Wildcats out quickly on top, leading 10, 15 to 10 here in set one. Welcome back to Lexington, where Kentucky leads in set one, 15 to 10. It was yesterday these two teams met up, and Kentucky 13 aces in just three sets. Not only is that a season high, but they get it done in three sets. Bevan, the freshman, with five aces. Allie Stumler with three. Raya Walker, three. And Teeler, two of her own. Those are incredible numbers. That, numbers. That's a team that's pretty comfortable serving on their home court. Another reason why this Kentucky team trying to finish out the season in dominant fashion. Still a lot of hosting rights left out there as we draw closer and closer to NCAA tournament time. A look from Morgan Christian from the left pin there for Texas A&M, but that one goes into the net. Missy, good to be back with you. Well done. Welcome Kentucky back. on top 16 to 10. Very close match until things sort of uh, bottomed out here in Malibu. Not even windy today, but uh, it does happen. Oh, uh, nice hustle defensively by Texas A&M, but Allie Stumler and let's update you on her numbers. Off to a very good start. Now five kills on 10 swings. Allie Stumler doing Allie Stumler kind of things. Look at that right there. Two blockers, of course, waiting for her, as is often the case. She's a player who hits for a high efficiency, even in really difficult situations. Texas A&M in trouble here. It was seven to six seemingly moments ago. I was scrambling a little bit here after we dropped out, but now Kentucky uh, out to a comfortable 18 to 10 lead after winning three sets to none yesterday. Here. 
the marquee win was against Tennessee after they had struggled prior to that, and then they reached up to beat the balls. Yeah, and it looked like they had really found a rhythm at Tennessee. They had Destiny Cox in the lineup, a transfer from North Carolina, and she got hurt in that second Tennessee match. She's out for the season. I think that's hurt them. They were missing Treyana Rush for a period of time. So some people in and out of the lineup, and they just haven't been able to create the rhythm, I think, that they had hoped for. Raya Walker wearing number nine in white, 5'10", sophomore out of Sarasota, Florida, played 20 matches as a freshman. That's a good shot up into the block. Texas A&M got a rally around that, particularly when they're trailing by such a wide margin in the opening set. But I tell you what, Bella Bell just doing a great job being there, closing the block, strong, firm hands. Walker again, 13 aces yesterday. That's a, that's a crazy number in five long sets, let alone three short ones. Right. Well, that ball thrown up into the block and rejected once again. Bella Bell able to put that ball away. Nicely done by number 14 in white with some help on the outside from Rutherford. Nice pancake save by Bevan early in that rally to keep things going. And then the big block. And I tell you what, guess who's at the service line still? Raya Walker. Coach Skinner told us this team just tends to score points when she's at the service line. She's been playing back row for Maddie Skinner since Maddie was out in concussion protocol. And they've kept her across the back row, allowed Maddie to really focus on her front row play. Raya Walker doing a great job from the service line. Kill by Talbert, six foot three senior out of Montgomery, Texas, wearing number 12 in the dark road uniforms for Texas A&M. They could use some more of that. Five of 10 yesterday, that was a perfect execution on the slide. And speaking of that, very good pass. And that ball missed out of bounds. Unforced error, Talbert with the kill and serve reception, but then missed on the overpass. Yeah, when you take a look at the Texas A&M errors, six right now, but four Kentucky blocks. So real only only two unforced errors for Texas A&M. They're keeping balls in play, but now can they generate kills? Kentucky is a really good defensive team. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that. This is a hard team for anyone to generate kills against, isn't it? Beautiful move by Groan. And hard work covering Ajani uh, uh, Teeler there trying to keep that ball off the floor and a much needed stuff block out of the middle for Texas a &M. Yeah, Teeler doing her best there <laughs> to keep that one alive. <laughs> yeah, that one went right off her forehead. Gladly no damage. Uh, that ball poked with number 17 once again stumbling right there. When we look at Allie Stumler, we looked at her numbers from last year. We've, this has been a, a topic of conversation. I mean, I'm not saying anything that everybody else doesn't know. She had 345 last year on the season. This year, she's hitting 246. Is all of that dealing with a new setter who's still very much in her development uh, phase? Well, I think a lot of it is the fact that you know, Avery Skinner has exited, a player with a lot of experience. And so in a lot of out-of-system situations, they've removed Maddie Skinner from the back row. Her back row attack is no longer available. Allie Stummer taking a lot of out-of-system swings, and that's naturally going to reduce her numbers. And uh, Craig Skinner said that as the season has gone along, Emma Grom has really improved on her rhythm and trajectory and location. To the outside, time out here. Want to remind everybody our next True South has John T. Ledge traveling around Mobile Bay for Cozy Brown's Flounder and Shrimp for breakfast and Bushwhackers and Burgers for lunch. I got to set my DVR. Kentucky on the year at 19 and four. They played a very, very challenging non-conference. The losses early. Creighton was, uh, I think, a surprise, particularly because it were. And so I think it would be unrealistic to think there aren't going to be some growing pains for this team. And yet they have an opportunity. Remember, one of the things that can, the committee looks at is what you've done for me lately. So what about your most recent 10 matches? They have the opportunity to finish against Florida at home, back-to-back -back matches. I think a couple of dominant performances by the Wildcats could do a lot for their um, hopes to their hopes to host. Good scramble by Ann. I'm trying to find some rhythm. This first set is certainly gone. Nice read by Grom. So it'll be set point number one with Kentucky leading at 24 to 12. 
When we talked talk to Coach Skinner about the next steps for Emma Grom, one of the things he mentioned was, you know, she can look to attack more. She can be offensive. And there it is. So great job for Emma Grom. And Kentucky wants to play fast to both pins. And sometimes that, that just takes a while to really have yep. confidence delivering that ball with pace. That ball missed out of bounds. So another tough start for Texas A&M. Lost three sets to none in Memorial Coliseum yesterday. And as the Kentucky volleyball team has continued to have success at the highest point, you are your record at 12 and 11. And they've lost six out of their last seven. They are 40 in the RPI. What's a safe number? When you talk about the RPI, there are 32 AQs automatic qualifiers, conference champions. What's a, what's a safe number if you're looking for an at-large bid? Uh, this year, I don't know. I, I do not know this year that the head-to-head, -head, I think more than any other season, because of the head-to-head -head within, say, SEC play, within ACC play, it is so tight. It, it's going to make for such a phenomenal tournament. I, I usually think you can kind of be on cruise control until third round. That is not going to be the case this year. There's going to be some fantastic first round matches. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I was looking at the RPI earlier this morning, and you look at a number. You look at Stanford, Washington, BYU, even Penn State. All of them right now, in terms of just RPI, and that's only one of seven criteria for the committee, they might not host in the first and second round. That's right. Did you see Penn State going to Pittsburgh? Absolutely. Can you say that? <laughs> yeah. And I'm wondering, will the committee be crafty enough to give us some sister matchups at some point in the tournament? You know, could Kentucky and Baylor run into each other? Will we see the Skinner sisters play? You know, could Florida and Georgia Tech run into each other? Could we see the McKissick sisters play? So many fun things that could happen in this tournament. I'm really looking forward to it. One McKissick setting the ball. The other playing defense and receiving for Florida. Done a very nice job. That's a good block once again, Stumbler. Bella Bell. Craig Skinner says, look, she took over for a starter last year, Elise Getzinger, and Bella Bell not coming out of the lineup, not the way she's playing lately. Yeah, he had, said early, this, of that. He had said early this season that her efficiency and consistency is the only thing that hurt her, and that's not the case anymore. Another ace from Ryo Walker. I love this Kentucky team. One of the, when we talked to Coach Skinner, I said, what do you need to fine tune to make a deep run? And the first thing he said was serving. Well, I pick up the box score from yesterday's match. 13 aces for the Wildcats. Talk about responding to the call. Nice block. Bella Bell squaring her shoulders and just roofing that ball. Let's look at Kentucky. That is their seventh stuff, led by number 14 in white. So not only are they putting up aces, Paul, but the stuff blocks are a reflection of good serves that are limiting opponents' options. That's why serving is so important. You limit the options, and all of a sudden, the blocking game becomes much simpler. Another touch at the net by Bella Bell. And transition. Absolutely. <laughs> Bella ringing the bell. Out of system, she stuffs the ball. In system, she gets a really good block touch and leads to yet another kill. And a much needed timeout called by A&M. Kentucky on top early in the second, already up a set. Coming up tomorrow at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, we'll have our next Thinking Out Loud with Spencer Hall and Richard Johnson. They'll break down the weekend on the gridiron and talk about the hottest topics for the coming week as well, like only they can do it right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Back with former Florida Gator, Missy Whittemore. I'm Paul Sunderland. Missy at her home in Gainesville. I'm out in Southern California. And in Lexington, Kentucky, it is all the Wildcats. Up one set to none and leading very comfortably here. Dominating this match right now, dominating this series in every phase of the game. And this has been a dominating rotation. Raya Walker at the service line has been absolutely dangerous. You pair that with the blocking we're seeing from Bella Bell up at the net. Not to mention she's got some help from Reagan Rutherford and Allie Stumler. Pretty good helpers there at the pins. That's nice play and serve receive. Mallory Talbert, six foot three senior, as mentioned, 18 starts last year, number one blocker for the Aggies last season. So much trust between these two. They've played a lot of volleyball together. Camille Connor playing in her fifth year. Mallory Talbert, a senior. Those two can find each other on the court pretty easily. Good pass. Very good first contact. Combination play. Rutherford is dug nicely by the Aggies. And 
out of the middle. Bella Bell doing it at both ends offensively, as you saw there, and then defensively, as you have seen prior. We see the combination play where Rutherford swings down the middle, something that Coach Skinner said she hasn't been super comfortable with in the past. But they use it. It doesn't go for a kill, but it gives them an easy transition bomb. They come back with a kill out of the middle. You know, we talked earlier about Stumler's numbers being down significantly, but she's getting hot and maybe finding some rhythm with Emma Grom, her freshman setter, at the right time. Midweek, 15 of 35, no errors against Georgia. Yesterday, 13 of 36, two errors, and so far in the afternoon, hitting 400. So one of the best players at her position in the country, or any position for that matter, finding a rhythm with a new setter. Overpass. Taylor usually takes care of that. See if Texas A&M can take advantage, and they do not. Triana Rush is stuffed on the right side. By none other than Allie Stumbler. Here she is at the left pin. Look at the effort from Emma Graham. Are you kidding me? Pretty incredible. Finishing it off here with the block. That's all Allie Stumbler at the left pin. You know, after the Georgia match, Allie Stumbler said that this, this group had a team meeting, you know, player-driven team meeting after South Carolina. Of course, they lost that first match at South Carolina. And what a leader Allie Stumbler is becoming. They didn't talk necessarily about winning the SEC or winning the national championship. Allie said we would talk about how we want to approach each and every day. And isn't that exactly what the mentality has to be in order to make that deep run? Nice swing by number seven, Lauren Davis, as she heads to the sideline. Quality player, and, and I just scratch my head this year, week after week, as I look at Texas A&M. I think they expected more. Obviously, they did. They've lost six out of seven. I've, I've talked about, quite honestly, my respect for Coach Kuhn. Where do you think it's gone wrong for A&M? Yeah, I, I, it's, you know, I think it's definitely surprising. I think this is a team with a lot of talent, and for whatever reason, they've struggled. I mentioned the injuries. I think, you know, you just can't take for granted the rhythm in volleyball and players in and out of the lineup having an impact on this team. I think that Texas A&M, like say Florida, uh, maybe hasn't done great in the back-to-backs. Here's a look at Ajani Taylor and the way that Kentucky uses her behind on a true right side set even though she's a middle blocker and she just does it so well. But I tell you, Texas A&M has had a lot of splits in those back-to-backs and Florida had struggled with that split. Florida had split. Of course, with LSU in back-to-backs, had split with Mississippi State in back-to-backs, and finally yesterday was able to to do two, to win two in a row against Arkansas, and it went to five, and it went to 16-14 in the fifth. And I think that was a really important win for Florida because they still have a couple back-to-backs coming, and they're against South Carolina and Kentucky, so they need to be prepared for those. But I think that that uh, Texas A&M hasn't done great in the back-to-backs. They've had some splits that I think they'd like to have back. It's never one thing. When, when a season goes, quote, on, this is me saying this, goes south, if you will. It's never one thing, unless you lose your senior setter or, or there's one devastating injury. But certainly Destiny Cox, as you mentioned, was sort of coming into her own with this group when she yeah. was knocked out after they, they beat Tennessee. 12-3 is the lead. Stumbler back to serve. And that was another kill from Kentucky's freshman setter, by the way, who's finding some offense here late in the season and just getting better and better. Maddie Skinner, I asked you and alluded to it. Is she the best sophomore in the country? Or certainly in a very small group of, of outstanding sophomores, irrespective of position. Match without Michaela Robinson, who had gone down in an injury at Ole Miss, and you really hate to see her season end that way. Such a phenomenal player. But because of that, South Carolina came out in a different look, a 6-2 system where their setters were rotating with their middles, something that no one had seen. And they just came out with a lot of energy. You know, and, and Coach Skinner will be the first to tell you they did not prepare well. He, he felt that his team had not prepared well going into that match. He said it was a very different team in the gym the next day. And since then, this is a focused Wildcat team. Sometimes a loss isn't a bad thing. I, I think it could be good for these guys. Good work by Texas A&M. Kill off the left side after a long, determined rally on both sides. Morgan Christian able to get the kill wearing number eight. There's Triana Russ, struggled yesterday against this block of Bella Bell, along with uh, Arjana Teeler in the middle. The outside blockers aren't bad either. <laughs> that ball sprayed out of bounds, looking for a touch, a rare mistake by Maddie Skinner, at least so far on this afternoon. Another look here at the set to the outside. And just doesn't quite come through on that one as it sails long for Maddie Skinner. 
Yeah, I, as a hitter, I always used to like to blame, blame the setter, but <laughs> that set was perfect. You know, Skinner, albeit a, a superb talent, is going to miss a few. Nobody's perfect. Johnny Teeler, 5'10 junior, mentioned out of Texas, second team All-American last year, number one in the SEC in blocks at 5'10. Hit 435 last year, and he's even moved up from there this year. Bell on the slide missed that. We were talking about Johnny Teeler before first serve. Is she a candidate for player of the year in the conference? I think she's a phenomenal talent. I think what she does is incredibly unique, but I wouldn't have her in that conversation. You know, when I think of a player of the year, and I know not everyone thinks of it this way, but I'm looking for that player. If you remove her from her team, I'm not sure that her team can win without her. And, you know, that's why to me it's the Allie Stumbler of Kentucky that has to be, you know, a piece of that conversation. While I know you might say her numbers are down this year, her role might be even bigger for these Wildcats. And I have so much respect for six rotation outside hitters. I'll tell you what, as a setter, I never had to pass balls, and I want absolutely no part of it. It just looks <laughs> terrifying to me. Allie Stumbler does it with grace. She serves the ball well. She is the complete package. Do you think it's either Stumler or Skinner who will be, in fact, the player of the year? Or are you picking Allie? Ooh. Or, or who SEC? else should be in that mix? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think I'm picking Allie. I think I'm picking Allie. She is just so important to this Wildcat team, all that she does for them. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I, I, like you, sort of always look to a six-rotation player as far as the most valuable player in an Olympic tournament or a college tournament or something like that. The only exception, and I think I'm going to make one this year, although Dana Redke struggled in her last match, I think Dana Redke's got to be the Big Ten player of the year. She plays three and a half rotations because she plays across the front. She does serve in that one rotation defensively. So she's my Big Ten player of the year. Nice swing, Texas a and albeit well behind here in the second set, start to smooth things out, particularly in first ball side out. Morgan Christian absolutely has the ability to go off for big offensive numbers. I mean, she's a high flyer. She gets a hold of one sometimes, and it's impressive. They can get her going. She's a game changer for sure. You see the ability she has just to go up and over the block. That ball served out of bounds. Texas A&M trying to apply the same kind of pressure that uh, Kentucky has done so far on the weekend. Yesterday, if you're just joining us, a season high 13 aces, an unheard of number, 13 aces in just three sets. And the scary thing is this Kentucky team returns nearly everyone. I mean, this is a team who you will see these faces on the floor again next year. So that's a little bit scary for us as the opponents. So is Ali Stumler going to take her COVID year and come back? Is that what you're saying? Stumler is officially a senior. I've been, I've been known to write things down incorrectly, but I've got Allie Stumler as a senior. But she could okay. take a COVID year. Madison Lilly right. could have taken right. a COVID year and come back, but she decided to turn pro with an eye, hopefully, at playing for Karch Kirai in Paris in about two and a half years, a little more, a little more than two and a half years' time. But it's a world championship summer. Lauren Davis with another kill. We'll update you on her numbers. Now three kills on 15 swings. Stumbler leading the way with seven kills. Maddie Skinner with five. And it is 18 to eight. A very comfortable lead for Kentucky. Sabrina Sestala will come in out of Cypress, Texas. 5-5 five, five senior at the DS. Combination play. That's a nice roll. Controlled roll right over the top by Rutherford. Nice ball that Emma Grome just hangs up there in the middle and lets Reagan Rutherford have some looks. You know, I think that's an interesting point you bring up, Paul, though, as we get to the end of the season and so much talk about the NCAA tournament. And probably these conversations are starting to be had, though, as coaches look at ro rosters who will take advantage of that COVID year. I mean, that changes the picture of volleyball so much here for the next couple seasons. I mean, it's drastically changed this season. As many have said, you know, look at Louisville, ranked number one right now. A couple of really important players for them, Anna Stevenson and Tori Dilfer, who've returned for that fifth year. Is that team ranked number one without them? I would say not. 
So it's had a huge impact on college volleyball. Yeah, I really agree. And across the board, I've talked to a number of coaches that have said from top to bottom, the level of play has been really, really high. You expect that from teams like Kentucky, like Florida, like Louisville, who you alluded to, playing at a very high level. But you get in the middle of conference play and you see some really good quality matches, and that's all these fifth years. And, and you talked about all of Kentucky coming back. I don't know if the SEC coaches want to hear that. But yeah. in the Big 12, at least for the time being, Jared Elliott has told me all of his starters, except for Breon Butler, are coming back for wow. the additional year. All of them. They've wow. already committed to doing that. Yeah, I was surprised to hear that. Look at Treyana Rush there, 14 in black for Texas A&M. This is a player who we said missed some matches, came back with a huge jump start in her match against Florida, hit over 400. I mean, Florida had no answer for her. She was absolutely unstoppable. And so she's a player who, you know, I think as Texas A&M has been up and down, and some of their, you know, go-to attackers have been up and down. And of course, that's the result of their season. But she's a player who certainly can go off for big numbers. I think you see that in Christian as well. Well, Coach Kuhn talked about them being so error-prone and being so inconsistent, and that's kind of just been the story of their season. Good first contact for a while, and here, a shank pass. So, obviously, a frustrating campaign for the fourth-year head coach in Bryant College Station. You, you alluded to Florida, and we've talked about them a couple of times. When it, they're in an unusual spot. They might not host the first and second round. It has happened, but it doesn't happen very often, and right now, Florida is number 23 in the RPI. How do you evaluate their body of work as the second set winds down? Well, I think it's interesting. You know, I said Kentucky had an opportunity to finish the season in dominant fashion and make a case for hosting maybe even a top four seed. Well, Florida could maybe make the same case yep. as they have. They, they end the season with Kentucky. They also have South Carolina twice. They still have a match with Auburn. And so they still have opportunities to certainly land themselves a top 16 seed and be a host. But... You know, if not, you're looking at perhaps a trip to FSU. Can you imagine that in the first and second round for FSU? That's happened many times. Those are heated matches. You know, you've got UCF down the road. Uh, you've got a Miami team having a good season. Um, as we know, those first and second rounds are pretty regional. So you kind of take a look at the teams around you. And one of the things that's so different about all of those Florida schools, unlike on the West Coast, they're all in different conferences, so they can play in the yes. first and second round. Absolutely. And a rush into the antenna and missed that down the line. So now it will be set points for Kentucky. And you mentioned Florida State. Florida State beat Florida in a non-conference match uh, earlier in the season. UCF was 20 in the RPI last time I checked. I've, I've got uh, Florida State around here somewhere. I think they're about 17. Set point. It's been an easy afternoon. Been an easy weekend for Kentucky. And Emma Grom, why not? I think she, Emma Grom has grown throughout the course of this first year, filling the huge shoes of the National Player of the Year, Madison Lilly, but uh, getting more and more comfortable. It has been all Kentucky so far, looking to improve to 13-1 and in conference and get to their 20th win once again here in Lexington. You're watching College Volleyball on the SEC Network. season is that true that is true the most matches Mississippi State has ever won in their SEC history is eight this wow. year they, they've already got 12 wins good Just for a, them yep what yep, a great absolutely. story yep Just underway here in the third with Missy Woodmore on Paul Sunderland, and it has been all Kentucky so far, 25-12. 25-11. <laughs> Hard-working rally to kick things off, but missed just out of bounds. You cannot help Kentucky with errors because look at the defensive effort. This team is so good defensively. In fact, Coach Skinner said right now at this point in the season we're as good as we've been defensively. He said we dug some big balls against Georgia. So this is a Wildcat team that could be peaking at just the right time. 
Well, let's remember as well, we've talked about Emma Grome an awful lot, but also stepping into an important position is Eleanor Bevan for the Libero. I mean, Gabby Curry and Madison Lilly were all Americans and then some. So not only one position, but two vitally important spots to fill in with very young players. <laughs> they don't get any younger, they're both freshmen. Yeah, and not just what she does defensively, but how about that pass right there? Perfect pass. According to Kentucky's notes, she leads all Liberos in the leagues in passing numbers. A ball off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Ali Stumler, a little bit quiet in the second, although both sets have been pretty quick. Eight kills now on 19 swings for Stumler. I think the only thing that works against Allie at times is how easy she makes everything look. She just makes it look too easy. You don't realize how hard her job is. I'm going to give you a comparison in a moment. A lot of people, if you're a volleyball fan, of course, you saw an awful lot of Jordan Larson at the last Olympic Games when she and her teammates won the Olympic gold medal, the first ever for the United States women. And not only Stumler and Jordan, look, I'm not putting that on Stumler. I'm just saying that I think they've got a lot in common. Physicality, they're about the same stature, both about six foot two, very high volleyball IQ, and technically incredibly sound. And just as I say that, stuffed on the outside <laughs> for the first time. Well, your opponent gets a vote. Yeah, that looked like a little bit more of a gap set, like they chose to bring her in from the antenna just a little bit there. And Trayana Rush all over that. Great job of diving back into the seam by Trayana Rush, though. I think you're nice, being nice. I thought that it was just a bad set, Missy. <laughs> it was something Craig Skinner talked about. He said, you know, we talked about Stumler looking a little bit different attacking on the left side. And some of those sets have been left short. And, and that was maybe the first one so far for, on the afternoon. I thought it was interesting, though, Craig Skinner said, you know, tempo is even more important than location for his attackers at the left side. How important that tempo, that rhythm is for them so that those attackers can be full speed when they take their swing. They don't have to slow down that last step. I think it's just so important. Shank pass, and Dijani Teeler right there to put that to the floor. One last thought, once again, I'm, I think everybody around volleyball on the college side is just in love with the story down in Starkville. And that's a place where forever everybody said, don't go there, you can't win. And Julie Darty Dennis is making liars <laughs> yes. out of out of all of us. Yeah, if I have one regret from this season, Paul, I called Florida and Mississippi State. It was the opening SEC weekend there. And I think looking back at that match, maybe I spent too much time thinking, gosh, what's wrong with Florida? Instead of appreciating how good Mississippi right. State was because I didn't realize at the time what a great team they were going to be this year. How about the swing there by London Austin Roark? The middles for Texas A&M are both very experienced, very talented. If they can ball control well enough, they can get them going. That's a good look from behind, off the edge of the block, with hustle defensively by Texas A&M, tough angle, and that's going to be for contact. Kentucky, number seven in the RPI, number seven in the coaches poll. And in the committee reveal, <laughs> they were number five. So we have three different sources to sort of measure teams against relative to their body of work. Oh, that's a good swing. Boy, really like what Morgan Christian is doing on the outside, the transfer from Kansas. Beautiful ball from Camille Connor. Just great tempo. So smooth all the way out to the antenna. Pretty efficient night last night. There were a couple of bright spots. We talked about uh, Lauren Davis before first serve. Christian would be the other, but neither of them got much help as Texas A&M. We'll go back through the scores. When they met yesterday, it was 25-17, 25-18, 25-15, and Kentucky hit a blistering 391 to compare to 234 for A&M. Macy Carabine, 5'11 graduate out of Indianapolis, transfer from Denver, doing a good job at the Libero. So far for Texas A&M. Great line shot there by Maddie Skinner. 
And as we said, Coach Skinner talked about the fact that they've worked with their pins as of late on really turning on the ball and not swinging cross body down the line, but swinging with heat down the line. Good block again, and AM will not be able to track that down. And I'm so used to seeing May, uh, Macy Carabine at the Libero position. You're absolutely right, Missy. It's Allison Fields wearing number 11 out of San Antonio. She is in the Libero jersey for now. As back to serve will be Emma Grome out of Loveland, Ohio. That ball coming up just a little bit short. One of the toughest opportunities, the ball coming straight over your head. Yeah, I think it is. It's so hard to know where you are on the court as you're tracking that ball over your head. And obviously, Skinner trying to take a little something off that one and roll it over, but just further off the net than she realized. Skinner, 7 of 17, four errors. Stumler leading the way with eight kills. Johnny Teeler with six kills on 13 swings, no errors. As a team, Kentucky is hitting 324 to only 014 for the opponents from a &M. Nice play on the slide by Talbert. There's that connection again between Camille Connor and Mallory Talbert as a middle blocker. She's third on this team in attempts. So Camille Connor not afraid to find that middle. Great job there by Connor, even though she's pulled off the net, continues to push the ball to the middles. The ball served just out of bounds. Down the line, missed by Cameron Innes. And when you look at Talbert's numbers, hitting 308, you know, you'll take those percentages against uh, a lot of others out of the middle. Nicely done. Going back to serve now, Raya Walker. 13 aces yesterday, and if I'm remembering our graphic, she had three of them. Absolutely. Christian again, ripping down wow. the line. What a dig by Grome. Yeah. And then rolled in. Oh. Smart shot by Stumler, but if you're Texas A&M, that ball cannot go down. Wow, the dig from Grome, incredible. But yeah, that ball cannot score. Absolutely can't have that one go down. Just too many hard hit balls from Allie Stumler that are hard to defend. You gotta have that one. Well, especially when it, with A&M, the way they got blown out yesterday and are getting blown out in the first and second set. Here they are at least in contact. A yeah. rare mistake by Christian who's been solid so far through the first couple of sets. Look at that dig. Not only wow. kept off the floor, but right on target. Another Good dig for Raya Walker. Walker. You make Texas A&M, a team that has been error prone, touch the ball time and time and time again. And they break down the longer they have to handle it. Yeah, some beautiful digs for Raya Walker, and you just continue to play transition volleyball, something that Kentucky's very good at. And unfortunately, A&M just errors their, themselves right out of the rally. But I'll tell you what, we talked about what great point scoring we get from Raya Walker in this rotation, and she helps herself there with a couple big digs. Timeout called by Texas A&M. We've got a challenge here for in and out. So we will stay with this a challenge being called again. Challenge ball in or out, touch off the block, or a net violation, all in the same bundle. And for those SEC volleyball fans, a quick update from Starkville. Mississippi State leads Tennessee two sets to none. Amazing story. Tennessee is good. I yeah. like Tennessee's personnel. I think they're really solid at every position. It just, like as you pointed out, I mean, Mississippi State's not sneaking up on anybody anymore, but when you saw them at right. the very beginning of the year, you, you're just not ready for Mississippi State to be playing at this kind of level throughout the course of a, not only a match, but a season. That ball's out of and bounds yet to, to my eye. To sustain the level they've played at, I think has just been so impressive because they have become a story. And so to sustain that level, to do it at home, to do it on the road, to do it with you know multiple people in and out of the lineup, they're not afraid to make some subs if somebody's having an off night. It, it's, it's just a great, great story. And speaking of subs, second setter, you don't see Camille Connor out of the match very often, but uh, Nisa Buzla Tepe, the freshman out of Turkey, is on the floor now, inserted for Bird Kewen. When everything goes wrong, you change the setter. She's wearing number 13 in black out of Istanbul, Turkey. 
And not to mention, Paul, the fact that we said, you know, this felt like a must-have in order for Texas A&M to even be in the conversation. And as a fifth-year setter, Camille Connor, obviously her career coming to an end. So they're about to hand the ball over to a youngster next year. And when we spoke with Coach Kuhn the other day by Zoom, she said because of the physicality of Kentucky, you might see a 6-2, which bolsters right. your lineup. Three attackers, three blockers, if you will, in all six rotations. But we haven't seen that. We've seen a 5-1. We've just seen both setters. Yeah. And that ball missed out of bounds. Eleanor Bevan out of Louisville, Kentucky, of course. Isn't that where all Libros come from? <laughs> sure feels that it way, seems like it? it? It seems like it. Causes me to think about the ACC, and one of the Libros I've been most impressed with is the young Libro at Louisville. Mm -hmm. I think she has done a remarkable job. Oh, nice block. That ball is stuffed straight down as Johnny Teeler along with Reagan Rutherford. Great look at the foot speed of Ajani Teeler, how quick she is laterally, and her ability to close a block. I think as an attacker, there's times where you actually think there's going to be some open seam. And Ajani Teeler just like lightning closes, reaches in at the last second, takes it away. Elena Scott is the fine young libero at Louisville, the only undefeated team in the country. And an impressive win at home over Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is very talented, but like Kentucky so far in the afternoon, Louisville, they do not beat themselves. Very low error rate in all phases. Yeah. In transition up into the block, A&M with a chance in transition, trailing by three. Davis unable to get the ball to the floor. That is a quality swing. High, flat, deep swing by number 17, Stumbler. Yeah, this is her bread and butter. You call it the high, flat, deep. I mean, she is just so good at this. And with tempo, just continues to come at you again and again. Want to get back into the regional seating and even the first and second rounds in just a moment. Kentucky with their largest lead here in the third. Davis is slowed. Good cover by the Aggies. Look at that dig right on target. Transition again. Davis maybe only going to play three sets yesterday and today, but she's getting a lot of swings. We have come to the media timeout. Memorial Coliseum in Lexington, Kentucky, where the defending national champions comfortably on top of Texas A&M. Upcoming matches as the season winds into its final couple of weekends. Louisville trying to stay unbeaten. Notre Dame team that's been very hard to figure out. Arkansas must win out. Texas is going to be a number one seed. Not overall, but I mean they're going to host. At Arkansas, they lost twice to this fine Kentucky team in five sets. One of them was 16-14, the other 15-8. And then lost yesterday. They lost on Friday three sets to London, Florida, but then lost yesterday. Also 16-14 in the fifth. Pretty tough for the Razorbacks to fight off all those heartbreaking, very close losses against the top teams in the conference. Stumbler with a kill. But again, Mississippi State, they're leading Tennessee right now over on SEC Plus, SEC Network Plus, two sets to none, other notable matches. UCLA Bruins are rolling right now. Yeah. They, they're really playing good volleyball top the Pac-12. Oregon is solid. And then Purdue. We talk about Mississippi State all the time because they came out of nowhere. But Purdue is having maybe their best season in a long, long time. Beaten Wisconsin twice. This is the only, uh, and then this is the only meeting later today versus Minnesota. I really expect UCLA to make a jump here in terms of where the committee has them because prior, or excuse me, after the first reveal, they beat Washington. So they were in pretty good place before they had even beaten Washington, and they just continue to get better. Mac May, one of the best in the business, a lot like Allie Stumbler, a very, very good all-around player. And then Charity Looper, who has uh, been in and out, didn't play in that first Washington match. She's a lot like a Johnny Teeler, a very undersized, spectacular player on the perimeter. Yeah. 
Allie Stumler now rotates to the back row, but prior to that, I'll tell you what, Kentucky had Bevan, Walker, and Thorpe across the backcourt. Good luck getting balls to the floor against that group. That is an impressive backcourt. Let alone what they do blocking-wise up front, whether right. it's Skinner or Stumler or Bella Bell. And don't forget Ajani Teeler having a magnificent season, both offensively and in the blocking phase. That's Tharp and right back, who I mentioned wearing five in white. And here comes Ajani Teeler from the right side. Look at the footwork getting there so that she has that line to swing at. Teeler now eight of 16, no errors. Bolstering even more her hitting percentage among the best in the conference. That ball missed out of bounds by Treyana Rush. And 13 in white on the floor now for Kentucky is Aaron Lamb, the player who played in Maddie Skinner's absence at Tennessee and had a phenomenal match, was named Freshman of the Week after that. Clearly there, around the country, there are a lot of teams on the bubble. We talked about Arkansas, Mississippi State. Uh, maybe, <laughs> I gotta stop taking them off the bubble, we'll see. But there's just a lot still to be decided, not only in the SEC, but in the ACC, the Pac-12 also. But upcoming schedules, you see what Florida has in front of them, maybe the best up. We showed you that advancer and what's coming up as far as the most important date. That is the 18th when a new champion will be crowned in a full field of 64. But the selection show, that's, I am not, I'm not, I'm going to be home for that. I'm not going to record that. I'm going to watch that absolutely for sure. That's at 8.30 Eastern time on ESPNU on the 28th. And then the regionals and regional finals for the first time will be a day off in between. Very good decision. Health of the athletes, that's quality of play, good decision to give a day off as we come out of the timeout and then yeah. of course onto the championship. I think as we look at those teams in the hunt from the SEC, Paul, it's so interesting. We didn't include South Carolina there. And that, of course, is floor, excuse me, Kentucky's one loss in SEC play. So when you think about the teams we showed you and you add to the mix their own Miss and South Carolina and a few other teams, it really speaks to the health of the Southeastern Conference Volleyball League. That there are that many teams that on any given night can win a match. In South Carolina, you had, I mean, they got off to a very good start to the season. They were receiving votes. They were in the top 25, and then it's kind of drifted away from them. They're currently 6-9 and nine in conference play and 14-11 and 11 overall. I don't think that gets them anywhere near the bubble. LSU, very talented team, but they had some injury problems to some of their star players. And then uh, Old Miss there, I think Kayla Bandworth has done a really good job, but they're just going to come up a little bit short as far as tournament selection is concerned, at least as of now, because they just don't have enough in front of them that can possibly help. Do you, do you agree with that? I do. I do, absolutely. But wow, I mean, the turnaround that, that's happening there is so exciting. Really, in that entire state, people had written off, you know, it's just not a volleyball state. And to see what's happening at Old Miss and Mississippi State, just can't say enough about the quality of coaches there. Yeah, I watched Ole Miss. I didn't have a chance to do them this year, but I did last year, and I thought, boy, okay, got the right coach, got the right leader, changing yeah. things, but the, their level of play, much improved this year, mm -hmm. much improved. New setter, transfer, originally started her career at Oregon State, and uh, that certainly helped a lot in terms of smoothing things out. So Ole Miss, a team on the rise as well. Got to keep pace with Mississippi State. Kentucky just three points away now from closing out a relatively easy weekend sweep over the visitors from College Station. That ball missed out of bounds by Chris. Two points away. And Kentucky has looked every bit of a contender so far in all phases of the game. 13 aces yesterday, consistent service pressure on Texas A&M, which had no answers for the level of play offered up by Kentucky. A rare shank pass. Some subs on the floor now for Craig Skinner. 17th year. It took a while. I remember joking with Coach Skinner after they won the national championship. He came on to do a post-match interview. I, I asked him what had taken so long. <laughs> it's not <laughs> easy to do. Maddie Bresowitz 
Five, six defensive specialist on now, number one. And that's a very poor set in transition. Trana Rush trying to make the best out of it. Mishandled ball. Kentucky still can't get the ball to the floor. Good control dig. And finally, off the edge of the block and down. That's Lamb again out there at the left pin. Some young faces for Kentucky. Same result. Six foot three freshman, as you mentioned, uh, the match that Maddie Skinner missed with that concussion against Tennessee. She came in, filled in nicely, and now it is match points for the number seven Kentucky Wildcats. And that'll close it out. There's a lot of respect between these programs and these coaches, and I think when Kentucky looks back at this, they will think that they played awfully good volleyball against Texas A&M to sweep them not once, but twice, and very convincingly. I think they